The Princess Bamba collection is the largest collection of August Sheft's paintings in the Sikh Gallery at the Lahore Fort. The Court of Lahore Masterpiece by August Theodore Sheft has first exhibited in 1855 Vienna. It's an intuitive force as a painting and a depiction of Lahore's history. It contains more than 60 biographical figures from the Sikh Empire. At the time of their exhibition in Vienna, Sheft's paintings represented scenes of the Sikh Kingdom, which no longer existed. Maharaja Sher Singh, who was his host at the time of his visit to Lahore, was assassinated. The Sikh Empire, that had once been a place of great riches and treasures, had collapsed, and its last ruler, the child king, Maharaja Dalip Singh, was in exiled captivity in Britain. Since their exhibition in 1965 at the Sikh Gallery, these 11 paintings have suffered depredation owing to Lahore's inclement weather, lack of attention, and improper ventilation. Now, these 11 paintings will undergo their overdue restoration by a team of five Hungarian art restorers. I'm Erika Sokan, art conservator from Hungary, and I'm here to take part in this extraordinary uh, conservation project in Laor. It's uh, also a great opportunity to see the local approaches towards the monument and mural conservation that I truly respect. My name is Nora Somodi and I am a painting conservator from Hungary, Budapest. And I came here to Pakistan, to Lahore, to participate in the August Chef restoration project. So I, I am so, uh, Zsófia Petes, uh, a painting conservator, self-employed painting conservator and photographer from Hungary. I studied six years long in, uh, in the Hungarian University of Fine Arts in Budapest. For us Hungarians, as the sole European nation with Asian origin, Central and South Asia have never been unknown places of the world, and thankfully to the activities of the Hungarian Orientalists in the territory of present-day Pakistan, the cultural relations between the two countries have a centuries-long history. The 11 paintings of August Schöft, which are kept in the Sikh Gallery of Lahore Fort, are also part of this special bond. Um, one of the components, of course, uh, of our DNA is diversity and inclusion. And uh, from that perspective, um, I think it is extremely important to look at uh, our art, our culture, our heritage, um, this Princess Bamba collection and the restoration project uh, we took up. Uh, essentially, um, I think represents um, some of the components of initiatives that we are taking and we have been taking in the recent past and it also represents a kind of renaissance I think within the bank uh, in terms of our own identity and how we connect uh, with communities and society around us. Our sponsorship for the restoration of these paintings to their original grandeur through Hungarian experts is part and parcel of that belief. These paintings reflect a cross-cultural aspect of our society, from Hungary to Pakistan to the Sikh culture. We believe that we have to safeguard our heritage, and particularly those where the international heritage is involved. And this initiative will go a very long way in creating strong bond between Pakistan Hungary, and of course the Sikh community 
across the border. The first step of starting any conservation project is condition assessment. We learn and examine the intricate details about the paintings and the artist through this process. The goal is to get close and look deeper into the layers of the painting and understand the intentions of the artist, its historical significance, condition, deterioration of materials and what the painting consists of. We also look for signs of previous restorations and if there were any interventions previously. We start by taking measurements, listing down all the damages, recording, noting down labels and inscriptions, trying to find out what happened with the painting in the past. First, condition assessment starts with the photographic examination in the normal light and raking light from the front and the back sides of the paintings. We use special macro lenses and cameras to achieve higher magnification and to see the layers and the deterioration phenomenon from a closer point of view. We use UV-induced visible fluorescence imaging technique to learn more about the varnish layer. In this case, the natural resin varnish layer appears as a greenish haze on the painted surface. The retouches appear as dark patches. With the help of images taken in UV radiation, we can easily see and recognize the signs of the previous restorations. We also examine the paintings with an infrared camera. In sunlight, infrared wavelengths are present. The infrared wavelengths can penetrate below the surface, allowing us to look deeper. We can look through the dark varnish layer and we might look even deeper through the paint layers and detect underdrawings and hidden details, signatures or inscriptions underneath the overpaint. We made a discovery in case of Dalip Singh, the portrait of Dalip Singh, uh, because there is a change made by the artist, August Schuft. It's called Pentimento, uh, what means it's a change of mind. When, when the painter is working on an idea uh, during painting, during creating, then because of something, uh, he gets another idea and he's abandoning the original idea, idea and changing it. And that happened with the hat. So first it was painted, painted on the head, then it was overpainted by Schuft and he painted um, next to the prince on the ground. So that's a change, an original change made by August Schuft and it's very good, it's very, very interesting discovery. This technique often discovers details of the artist's creative process, modifications and reworking. After a photographic examination, we compare all three photographs together, normal, UV fluorescence and IR images to process information and understand the condition. August Theodor Schäft belonged to a family of artists. He was the fourth generation of painters. The street where he was born in 1809 is still known as Kapiro Street, meaning Picture Maker Street in Budapest, Hungary. At the age of 28, he felt skilled enough to trade his talent abroad, traveling through the Levant, accepting commissions en route. Schäft reached India in 1838 with his wife. Armed with a little bit of introduction through his host, Dr. Hunik Berger, Chef traveled along the Ganges from Kolkata to Benares, Delhi and Amritsar. Then he finally reached Lahore in 1841 at the court of Maharaja Sher Singh. Maharaja Sher Singh asks for a portrait to be done. It's the evening and so Chef says that the light is not good enough so perhaps I'll do it tomorrow morning if I may come back. At which Maharaja Singh, uh, Singh suggested that they did a port he did a portrait of Bhai Gurmukh Singh, one of the senior courtiers. Sherf does, and everyone is so pleased with the result that many of the other courtiers demand that their painting portraits should also be done. During the year and a quarter that um, August Sherf was in Lahore, he was able to do a number of portraits, particularly of Maharaja Sherf Singh, 
and of senior courtiers. He was then also able to do a rather dramatic picture of um, Maharaj Ranjit Singh listening to the Holy Granth at the Harmandar Sab in Amritsar, surrounded by the golden tank. Before we can start to take the painting off the stretcher, flaking paint needs to be secured. Acrylic dispersion is applied with a brush or syringe to the edges of flaking paint. Fixing is undertaken where paint loss and flaking have occurred. We attach a temporary layer of protection to the surface of the painting. A reinforcing material is attached to the surface of the painting to protect the paint layer during the restoration process. The next stage is structural intervention. When the paint layer is secured, the painting can be turned face down and placed on the table. In order to do a thorough cleaning and accurate consolidation, the canvas has to be removed from its auxiliary support. Some of the paintings have old animal glued paper tape covering the tacking edges. It is necessary to remove it with a little application of water. Once the tacking edge is cleaned, nails can be pulled out from the edges with the help of pliers. Now, we can separate the canvas from the stretcher. Once the paintings are separated from the stretcher, we can start to work on the back of the canvas. First, we remove dust with a vacuum cleaner. Then, we use brushes, special sponges, and scalpels to remove dirt. We do scraping with a scalpel on the entire surface of the lining canvas. So it's called mechanical cleaning and in a dry way. We are not using any wet uh, solvent and uh, with scalpel it's just good to remove uh, this um, surface dirt if it's on the canvas and you can you can't remove it with hoover or brushes, then you take your scalpel and you scrape it off from the back. In this way, we not only clean the back of the painting, but also prepare it for consolidation. So the consolidation material can penetrate through the old lining canvas to the original canvas and to the paint layer. If tears and holes have formed, those are mended using a mixture of adhesive and flax threads. If needed, a piece of shaped and frayed new fabric is inserted into the losses of the original canvas. After cleaning and repairing tears, impregnation is done from the back with a heat-activated lining adhesive material. Before we can start with consolidation, we measure the temperature of the consolidation material constantly 
using a digital thermometer. Warmed and diluted solution is brushed evenly across the entire surface on the back of the canvas. If there is a good bond and uh, a good connection between the original canvas and the lining canvas, because the lining canvas is a secondary support layer attached to the back of the, of the original canvas, and if adhesion is good enough, there is no reason to remove it. So in some cases, we decided to keep the old lining canvas, and in some cases, we decided to remove it. Uh, if, if it was detached, from the, from the original canvas, uh, it needed to be removed and changed and relined with a new canvas, new linen. Once the consolidation material has dried, heat and pressure are applied with a heated iron through a silicone treated paper. Dr. Landed uh, in Bombay uh, in 1838 and his journey to Punjab took him to a few other states. He went to Calcutta and the Calcutta Courier actually um, does specify about his arrival and his commission works of art. He also went to Kapurthala and uh, his paintings commissioned art over there it still remains and it's uh, part of the legacy available uh, to date. Other than that, uh, when he came to Punjab and when he landed in Lahore, uh, he was looking for and he found uh, within uh, Maharaja Sher Singh uh, someone who was willing to uh, support his art and look at uh, his paintings and his uh, work from a different perspective. Sher's work has to be judged not simply from its technical expertise, he was extremely skilled at, for example, painting embroideries, embroidered clothes, rich garments, pearls, jewellery, etc. He had a weakness for that. Not just simply from the technical competence, but from his eye to be able, on a canvas, to be able to convey what was the historical relevance of the subject and of the painting in its historical context. That, I believe, to be the signature of August Schiff. The stretcher and the painting comprise together as a whole artifact. The stretcher contains valuable information about the painting. The preservation of the stretcher often requires modification. Before we can start with the cleaning of the stretcher, we need to preserve all the labels. A piece of lining fabric is placed onto the paper. We then apply moisture coming from a hydrogel because the water-soluble adhesive is used previously when they were attached to the wooden bars. Once the labels seem to be released easily, then gentle mechanical pressure is applied to effectively separate them. Next, the papers are immersed in deionized water. Bathing is an effective method to remove soluble degradation and the acidity of the paper. Now, we can start to clean the stretcher. First, we clean the thick layer of dirt with a vacuum cleaner and brushes. Then, we use a damp sponge to clean the excess animal glue. The wooden bars are then consolidated. Cracks, gaps, and losses are fixed and filled. All the paintings, the 11 paintings, uh, don't have the same structure of stretcher. Uh, some of them has a very professional, nice stretcher, what is adjustable and keyable, and have a um, um, beveled edge, a beveled face of the wooden uh, members. And that's very good because the canvas can't touch 
the bad two of the paintings, for example, the portrait of Bahadur Shah Zafar, the last Mughal emperor, uh, had a strainer. A strainer is not keyable and not adjustable, and all the wooden members had a flat surface. So the second canvas was uh, was lying on the on the stretcher bars, and a stretcher mark appeared. So what is not very good. That's why we decided to change and replace that strainer and replace it with a newly made reconstructed stretcher, what is keyable, adjustable and much uh, safer for the future of the painting. Before stretching, the structure of the auxiliary support needs to be stabilized. Modification of the mortise and tenon corner joints is carried out. Four new slots are created and carved into the plywood to use them as new key beds. The most interesting, uh, I think, aspect which I find fascinating also is that a lot of the paintings, uh, and especially the port of Lahore, he did not paint uh, while he was here. Uh, but he did make a lot of sketches. And while he was making these sketches, and which he took back with him and which don't seem to have a trace left anywhere, they were able to provide him with a lot of uh, treasure of uh, imagination. So when you look at the court of Lahore and the 60, 64 plus uh, characters that you see within that painting and the details um, that are uh, written by him in the notes of the Vienna 1855 uh, exhibition, they show you uh, from another perspective, not from an artist's perspective only, but also uh, somebody who is looking um, inward from an outward perspective and looking at uh, and commenting on the life, on the habits, on the dietary habits, or on, the, on the culture, on the different faiths. So the, the notes become very interesting actually when you look back and see how the interaction of different people within the painting also is elaborated in a very interesting way. The Court of Lahore by August Sheft is the largest of all the canvases. The composition of the painting is such that the placement of each figure represents his role at the Sikh court. The Maharajas sat with their kins. Assassins were linked to their victims and the Muslims, Sikhs, and Hindus mingled in an interfaith congeniality. Shir Singh, who was his host, was an Anglophile ruler. His patronage of Chef explains why, in the court of Lahore, Shir Singh is given such importance. He is shown on horseback, accompanied by his young son, Pratap Singh. During his stay at Lahore, Chef made a number of sketches of many characters of interest, such as the Bering Fakir, an ascetic who claimed to be able to survive being buried underground for days on end. The assassin Ajit Singh Sandhawalia is shown looking up at his victim Sher Singh. He stands back to back with his mortal enemy and next victim Raja Dhyan Singh. Similarly, in a shadow next to Pratap Singh is his assassin Lena Singh Sandhawalia. Over the last two centuries, the painting bore its fair share of damages. The old retouches from the previous restoration have become discolored. The natural resin varnish also became dark and yellow. In the upper left corner of the painting, flaking, tenting and loss of the paint layer has occurred due to shrinkage of the canvas, which happened due to water damage relating to roof leakage. As a result, Tide line is left on the painted surface and on the back of the canvas. Significant distortion of the canvas has occurred along the lower edge. Slack end canvas has resulted in a bulge in the lower area that cannot be resolved by keying out. The obvious decision is made. The painting has to be restretched to achieve its original tautness. To achieve that, the painting must be taken off the wall, dismounted in a horizontal position, and restretched to achieve its original tautness. After weeks of careful planning, we were finally ready to uninstall.
First, a cushioned bed on the floor is created, which will act as a protective surface for the painting. In this way, the painting can lie down securely without incurring any damages. The first goal is to put the painting down on the floor. After that, we can start to lower the painting down in a horizontal position on the cushioned floor. We need to be sure that every inch is aligned perfectly so the painting can be completely safe from damage. We remove all the nails. Then, we separate the canvas from the stretcher. Excessive dust and dirt are removed with a low-pressure vacuum cleaner. The original tacking edges are not strong enough and they are detached from the lining canvas where they are needed to be glued together. We then use canvas strips to reinforce the edges. Often the edges of a canvas are more prone to damage than the surface area of the canvas. Rust nails can affect the margins and the edges can become abraded. If there is not enough material on the tacking edges to support, tears can occur during reattachment. The canvas is attached to a new piece of fabric using an appropriate choice of adhesive and cut into thin strips. During setting, heat and pressure are applied through the silicone coated paper to reassure accurate contact between the layers. Once. This new fabric is joined to the edges of the canvas. The painting has been successfully strip-lined. The console system is then cleaned and repainted using matte white color. In 1780, a ban was born uh, in the Sukhothekia Missal, which was one of the uh, clans amongst the Sikh community, who then at the age of 12 in 1792, became the head of his Missal, the Sukhothekias. And gradually, because through force of personality and force of arms, he was able to establish himself as a Raja of the Punjab, and in time, through skillful negotiation with the British, through, through um, invasion of the northern, northern hill states, and then movement towards Peshawar and beyond into Afghanistan, or to the borders of Afghanistan, and south as far as Multan was concerned, he became the Maharaja of the Punjab. The significance of this was that it was the first time in 5,000 years of history, never before and never subsequently, that the Punjab was a nation state. And Maharaja Ranjit Singh's great quality was that he created, gave an identity to what we call Punjabiyat, where the Punjab, as I've said, became a nation state. And under him, the, he was a very prudent man. He, if he spent any money, it was primarily on horses, on jewellery, on his army, 
and he had one of the finest armies that the British um, East India Company feared. During reattachment, we want to have a good level of tension on the canvas to avoid distortion. We reattach the canvas to the stretcher bars with staples. Keys are added to the stretcher bars to provide a suitable level of tension. The old keys are broken or lost, so we reconstruct new ones from hardwood and colored them with dye. Because of structural problems with the Lahore Court painting, it is decided that we replace the two wooden crossbars of the rabbit frame and add four more elements in the corners. The half-lap joints of the crossbars are carved out with chisels. Two new members of the rabbit frame are constructed from hardwood. The wood is then shaped by design with several tools to obtain the desired dimensions and four new elements in the corners. In 1948-49, the Khalsa army again, partly because of political reasons, partly because of a short of money, they again crossed the Sutlej. At this time, the British took over and annexed the Punjab formally. And the Punjab as a state, as a state that had been founded and established by Maharaj Ranjit Singh, collapsed, it disappeared. And then the Punjab became part of British India. It was a sad ending to what was a glorious period of Punjab's history. The reinstallation movement of the Lahore court is challenging for us because we have to work out all the statistical details beforehand. So a drawing plan is crafted to explain the movements step by step. First, we lift the painting from a horizontal position to a vertical state with the help of ropes. Once the painting is in vertical position, we can shift it to the wall of installation by sliding it on the floor while using a double layer cushioned foam sheet under the painting. Then we lift the canvas up to the holding device with the help of ropes and pulleys. Finally, the top of the rabbit frame is fixed to the upper elements of the console system with hook screws. So when we already reattached the painting to the stretcher, we can just start to work on the painted surface. Previously, at the beginning of the treatment, we attached a temporary protection layer of white fabric on the painted surface. So that's what we removed.
and then we were able to see the painted surface again. It was already visible. Over time, natural resin varnish has turned yellow and dark, altering the visual impact of the artwork. An essential step in conservation is to remove the yellowed and darkened varnish layer to reveal the original colors of the painting and allow the artwork to be seen as it was originally intended. At this point, what an art conservator takes away can never be returned. We have to be extremely careful and not damage the original paint layer. A properly trained and experienced conservator can distinguish original paint, overpaint, and retouch. They use their scientific knowledge to choose the right solvents, and they always keep the collected information in mind. Just like UV fluorescence and infrared images were taken during the damage assessment phase. The solvent testing clarifies what solvents and materials to use for the removal of varnish without harming the original paint layer. We are using cotton swabs and organic solvents to uncover the true colors of the painting. We are just removing the varnish layer from layer to layer with its solvents, but we don't want to reach immediately the original paint layer. That's why we are using just mild solvents and just to be sure it's safe for the original paint layer, step by step. But there are still old retouches and overpaint, unfortunately, a lot. And there is actually a very nice discovery. There was some overpaint as well on the painting. So actually there in that side, in the shadow area at the bottom, uh, this bird here uh, was totally overpainted. It was not visible. Uh, there was a layer of black paint on the top. So we removed that black paint because uh, obviously that was um, done uh, by someone else much later. The connection between Maharaja Dilip Singh and Ugo Schoft remained even after the sale of the paintings in 1863. Because we have evidence that in 1871, Dilip Singh commissioned Ugo Schoft to do a portrait of Dilip Singh's second son, Frederick. It's a charming picture, which shows Frederick at the age of about three or four. The paintings remained in Dilip Singh's family and were then, uh, after his death, were inherited by his son, who then, after his death, bequeathed them to his sister, Princess Bamba. Princess Bamba was married to Dr. Sutherland, who was in fact the principal of the veterinary college at Lahore. She moved to Lahore after 1947, in fact, I think in 1951, and lived in Model Town. And when she passed away in 1957, she bequeathed this large collection of paintings by Scherft to her secretary, Pir Karim Supra, who in turn sold them to the Pakistan government and they have been on display ever since. The quality of the paintings was superb and they represent not simply the best workmanship of Scherft as such and not, and not simply the largest collection that we have of Scherft's paintings, but they also represent on a canvas, like the, the Court of Lahore, the entire political uh, machinations of the Sikh court in the period that followed the death of Maharaj Ranjit Singh in 1839. It's a tour de force as a painting and as a historical chronicle on canvas of that period of Punjab's history. At this point of the treatment, the losses need to be filled. First, we overfill the gaps. And after drying, the excess material is wiped off with a damp cotton swab. In adjusting the fillings, we try to bring them to the same level as the surrounding original surfaces.
Before varnishing, we add a layer of base color to the filling using watercolors. make a nice texture on the top of the filling because if you just have a smooth surface of the filling and you retouch on it, it will appear as a glossy patch. And uh, if you have a painting with impasto, painted with thick paint, then you want to do a, a surface of the filling uh, very similar of the original. So you do texturing and, and uh, yeah, you just do retouching on the top of that. So it won't be distracting your your eyes, it will be just integrated in a nicer level at the end of the restoration. Without a new varnish layer, the cleaned painting appears rather matte and desaturated. The role of the varnishing process is mainly optical, but it also provides a protective layer against grime and dust. And what I find very interestingly different about uh, August Schoft's paintings and his perspective on these paintings is uh, the very fact that he was not looking at uh, his subjects or his characters as part of uh, how, um, for example, uh, the East India Company or uh, any uh, British uh, painters would approach their subject. But the greatest tribute to Scherf's talent is this magnificent collection that we have in the Princess Bamba Gallery. And it is of paintings that have been done by him, which are portraits, as well as um, landscape scenes. This is nearly the final stage of the restoration process. Retouching requires patience and practice. The key is not to overdo the process. The retouched areas should blend in perfectly with the original art piece. If we retouch too much, the repaired areas will look different from the surroundings. So we have to feel our way through the process. At this point, we need to unify everything and find a delicate balance. Once the retouching is done, 
A final layer of spray varnish is applied to add extra gloss to the paintings. The final outcome of restoration should not be a radical transformation. It should only be the preservation of the artifact. With every challenge comes an opportunity to fabricate a new method and constantly rethink conservation. These paintings by August Scheft have traveled a long journey. They have lived through their fair share of damages and trauma. Now, we can see these paintings as the artist wanted us to see them. the gaze of the portraits, and the dynamic depths of the landscapes. All this incredible realism this monumental grasp of history. A vision of depicting the most familiar scenes of the Sikh Empire in a way that has never been done before. We can see a glimpse through time thanks to a canvas in a museum in the Lahore Fort. Right now they are in the Sick Gallery in the Lahore Fort. Uh, where they have been placed um, and that's where the restoration work was also taken up. Um, after the restoration, the inauguration has also been conducted and it is uh, very much available for the public to have a look at and to see and to appreciate uh, the glory of uh, what was Punjab at that time, at the time of Maharaja Ranjit Singh, Maharaja Sher Singh, how resplendent and how um, how magnificent uh, that legacy uh, for this area and this region remains and it's something that we can all connect with.